This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create this weird rolling over text. It's uh, pretty good, fake 3D, and uh, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. And you'll probably learn a thing or two about expressions that uh, you didn't know before. So the first thing we do in After Effects is create a new composition. Uh, we're going to call it Comp 1, 30 frames in duration. I'm using 1920 by 1080 frame size, HDTV, 29.97 uh, preset. Okay. First thing to do, since we're working with text, might as well make some text. So go new text and type out uh, text. That seems perfectly good. Now, scale it up to be of a reasonable size. And we're going to go with uh, something like an 80. Yeah, that seems about right. 80% uh, brightness and just white, regular white text. Cool. So I'm going to turn off the transparency grid. And first thing we're going to do is make this. 3D, and we're working in a classic 3D renderer, so don't use Ray Trace 3D for this particular thing. Now, since we want to rotate this, call up the rotation, and let's set the rotational keyframes. So, first thing I'm going to do is set its beginning state, and that will be negative 180. I'm going to go ahead uh, about a second, and then set it to zero. Go ahead another second, set it to positive 180. So that rotates up, and then through, and then down again. Take all those keyframes, easy ease them, go into the graph editor, select those keyframes, maybe zoom in on them, and we're just going to take them, and we're going to stretch the handles so that it looks a lot more interesting. So this is easing into the middle and then falling away. Good, cool. So now I'm going to call up the rotation and the opacity, and I'm going to use the rotation to influence the opacity with an expression. Hold down Alt, click on the opacity here. And first thing we're gonna do is R equals, and then pick whip to that rotation. So we've set up a variable that holds the rotation within this property. And then we're gonna set up an if then statement. So we're gonna say if, and then in rounded brackets, R is greater than 90, than the thing in squiggly brackets, we would like your value to be zero. Else, if in those regular brackets R is less than negative 90, we would also like your value to be zero. And if neither of those are true, else, then uh, the value could be 100. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, essentially, we've created a false floor that as soon as this passes 90 degrees, it disappears. So no matter what keyframes or what interpretation we do, no matter how we alter these things, you know, as soon as it passes 90, it's gone. So we've created a false floor without making any other objects here in the scene. But there are some other objects we'd like to make. Uh, most interesting will be a new camera. Cool. Okay, and we'd like to then use this camera to alter our perspective on things. Just to pitch up a little bit so we can sort of get a better look at where that floor is and how that might interact with things. Okay, perfect. Now I'd like to make a new solid. This will serve as our background. Uh, we're going to go with sort of a yellow. We're going to just desaturate that yellow. Maybe make it a little bit darker. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, okay, that goes in the background. Here's our text on top of it. Our text can stand to be perhaps uh, slightly brighter, maybe at, a, maybe at a 90. Okay, cool. Now what I'd like to do is to take this text and I'd like to add a brightness and contrast to it. Now what this does is that it makes things darker or lighter. And right now I'd like it to be at zero, but we'd like it to be tied into the rotation too. So hold down Alt, click on the stopwatch for the brightness, and the first thing we need to do is put in that R equals and then grab that variable there. Just like that. So R equals the rotation. Now, some things we want to do is set up another if then so that this R value can then influence how dark things are. But this thing, if we link it directly, is going to have positive and then negative numbers, and we only want negative numbers. So the first thing is if R is greater than or equal to zero, which means it's going to be a positive number, then we're going to say in brackets here, uh, y equals 1. And then we'll just put a semicolon there. And then else, 
we just say that y will equal negative 1, because it's either equal to or greater than 0, or it's not. There's only two options. Okay, make sure there's a semicolon in there. And then the final output here is going to be, let's say, r multiplied by y, and then multiply that by 2. And I'm going to get a little problem here. What's it saying? Uh, that I've used a capital Y instead. Make sure your syntax is uh, totally correct. So let's see what this is doing. Uh, right now it looks like our values are maligned. We just need to switch the first one to be negative and the second one to be positive. See how that goes. Okay, good. Yeah, I figured I had those wrong. Anyway, the point is that as it starts to pitch down, it's getting darker, and that is pretty much what we're after here. Cool, cool. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is turn this on. This is the uh, motion blur, and then turn motion blur on for the conf. Now I would like to pre-compose this. Control, Shift, C, pre-compose, move all the attributes in there. Awesome. And then back here in the original comp, I want to turn on collapse transformations and the 3D part. Now I'm going to duplicate it, move this below, and I'm going to turn off tra collapse transformations. And then I'm going to pitch its rotation here to be at 90. I'm going to duplicate that again, call this rotation, pitch it to negative 90. I'm going to take both of these, and then I'm going to apply a fill to them. And the fill I apply to them, I don't want red, I want black instead. Okay, and then I'm going to apply a fast blur to both of them. And I'm just going to jack that up a bit because these are going to be shadows. So these should be around 50, more or less. And then call up their opacity and put that down to about 50, maybe less. So maybe make one of the shadows, you know, not as strong as the other shadow, just to indicate different lights are causing them. Cool. And then we're going to stretch them out just a little bit. So what this does is it creates shadows based off of that initial text. Awesome. So for that first thing, that top text there, which we can call text, and we can call these things like back shadow and the front one, something like front shadow. Cool, so there's no confusion. We're going to apply a fast blur to it, just to make it a little bit, a little bit blurry like that. And we are going to set its mode to be on screen. So that's how it comes up, and we can kind of see through it. Awesome. And then within that text, we're going to duplicate this, and we're going to offset them in time a little bit. So just by about one frame each. Keep duplicating, offsetting, duplicating, offsetting, and so on like so. So it creates a whole bunch of them that pop up. Okay? So that's pretty cool. So let's observe how that looks. Whoosh. It's like some kind of weird ghost. It will eventually fall forward, getting darker and disappearing. And that is how we created this effect. Whoosh, and then it goes away. Cool. Now, you can go in here and you can stylize these if you like. You can give them something like a, uh, an alpha, alpha bevel. I mean, I did that. If you want to, you, you go right ahead as well. That could be fun. Uh, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, some of the things I use to style my work is that I put on an adjustment layer and then I put uh, HLS noise over everything and uh, went with squared and just the lightness 2%, which kind of breaks up the image just a little bit by applying grain over all of it and it lets you get away with a little bit more accuracy in what you're doing. But all in, this is the effect of creating text that seems to pop out of a ground that just simply isn't there. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and you've learned a thing or two about if-then expressions. They are uh, pretty great. If you want to learn more things about After Effects and other applications, then stop by the blog at PremiumBeat.com. And of course, come to Premium Beat for all of your music and sound effects needs. This has been Evan Abrams. If you want to see more of my stuff, check out EvanAbrams.com, YouTube channel EC Abrams, and hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams on there. And again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.